system, begin a transaction log. Seems like everyone always has somewhere to be in the big city. secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. Don't start, country. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library shelf. Now, look at them all. Feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I I'm still not a hundred percent. Plus, I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around, help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? It doesn't really matter to me. We'll never get too attached to ships. After the fifth or sixth time one blows up and you get marooned. The romance fades. Plus the frontier is a constellation ship. And you're one of us now. So it's just as much yours as mine at this point. Marvelous. All right, fine. Don't go doing any mining without me. Yeah, what is it? As much as I love uncovering new questions, I wouldn't mind a few answers though.
to your king loud as a bell. Eyes ready to let you aboard. Seals are good, air pressure good, and we're docked. We got a rook on deck. Good to see Constellation getting some fresh blood. An honest job. No shame in that. Some of us have done far worse. We're a team now. What we do together and now is more important than what we did alone and before. Wish I could have been down at the lodge to see the artifacts come together. I got a little lost peeking through the eye. Always preferred working alone, even around people I like. But we're all working together on this one. No finer group in the stars to be unraveling this mystery. Now, this station, the Eye, rigged up for deep space scans. Barrett and Sarah teased out the signs of where our artifacts could be hiding after we caught our second one. But the data takes a slow ride along the Sea of Light. Years or decades between us and the fringes of space without a grav drive. You won't be the only constellation out there. Andreja and Matteo are both following up on scans themselves. Matteo went out recently, but Andreja... It's been a while. Hate to pull the worried old man act on you, but... I'm an old man, and... I'm worried. Another rook in constellation who's making a name for herself? Likes to be on her own. I can relate, so I try to look out for her more than most. Uh, you're probably right. Just hard not to think of all the bad luck you can get into burning helium out there. We should just check on her, make sure all is right. You know where she should be, right, Vlad? She should be at one of the two sites I've marked on your star map. Can take care of herself, but... We all need backup sometimes. Anyway, hopefully you'll be catching Fortune's smile, and we'll have some more artifacts to take a closer look at. Happy hunting. That's why I missed your little welcome party. Got caught up plotting all the data the eye can give us. Wouldn't mind the helper's hand, though. Could speed the process along. Up-to-date planetary scans would help filter all the data I have to sift through. Maybe help to find the anomalous bits. And Constellation can slide a credit or two your way. All part of the mission of charting the stars, right? When you're orbiting a planet, your ship's scanners can pick up all sorts of information. 
signs of life, resources, structures where they shouldn't be. It all gets downloaded into data you can hand over to anyone who's interested. And Constellation is always more interested than most. Then we're hand in hand in agreement. Now get out there and burn some helium. I make the visit when they need me. Don't mind the loner's life most days, and the eye is important work. But I should make the trip more often. Can't let Walter be the only one tending bar there too long. Everyone will forget what a good drink tastes like. Ever run the scholars on the Centaurus proclamation? The original treaty that gave every human the right to colonize the stars? Stolen by some fool's joke of a crimson fleet rook looking to trade names to Captain. Sight to see pinned above my chair, like the whole settled systems was mine for the taking. Time dances its years forward, and I'd retired. That's when our own Sarah Morgan walks into the tale. Fire in her eyes and her head full of intel I thought I had spent the labor's efforts burying. Of course, I didn't have the Centaurus proclamation just lounging in my pockets. Belonged to the ship and her new captain in the fleet I had left behind. Tipped your ear long enough, but the short line of it, Sarah and I returned the treaty to the rightful owners. And I decided to hang around, lend an old pirate's wisdom to the mission. Usually it doesn't. I'm overdrawn from Lady Luck three times over. It's a long tale to tip your ear on. But if you ever wanted to visit, I have a house out there in the Starfield. Thought I was going to see life's eclipse from there, but Constellation swept me away. Haven't been there since we started on the eye. If you do go there, turn the lights off when you leave, okay? The eyes seen all it can. Let's deal. Show the words another time, then. Let's get out there and do something new. Can I carry that for you? Well, that's all I have to.
jurisdiction. Commercial activities are sanctioned in this area. Never regretted coming out of retirement. Constellations got the writ of the righteous. Keeps me young.
said. decided that soul is worth fighting for. Welcome to New Homestead. Please make your way to the building at the end of the path and down into the colony below. Stay safe and enjoy your... Nice Hello you. there. Welcome to the new Homestead Chunks. Sadly, we're out of the space. <laughs> so. Sure. 
What delicious chunks, Fook? Oh, 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 you had to go and ask the hard questions, huh? Uh, how can I pick just one? There's chicken chunks, beef chunks, potato chunk. You know what? I'm gonna cheat if you don't mind and just say I love them all equally. <laughs> <laughs> you know I do. And what's not to love? It's delicious, nutritious, easy, fast, inexpensive. It, it sure makes my hungry belly sing for joy. Yeah. My wife thinks I eat too much chunks food, but I just can't help myself. It's so good. Thanks for visiting Chunks. Welcome to Chunks. Please choose your Chunks. It's so cold here. Yes, I should have expected that. Did you know the museum here is full of old earth artifacts? What did we think of the tour? Very informative. I didn't know about the methane harvesters before coming here. The, um, Brown Horse Tavern, was it, huh? The food was better than I expected from a backwoods planet like this. It has a quaint charm, doesn't it? Just like the rest of New Homestead. Well, I hope you'll come back and see us again sometime. And I hope you'll consider another Star Sap tour. Tell your friends. I'm learning so much. I will. Thanks again. I wish this at least once in their life. Excuse me, Bill. You've got to do a better job of keeping your tour groups out of trouble. What do you mean? That little boy almost wound up on my operating table. Claudio said he was playing with some of the machinery down by the mines and nearly got his arm stuck inside. It could have been ripped off. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, kids, little trouble These colonies makers. are not smaller than a I'll tell the guests to be more careful. Damn right. You've got to do something. Or else next time it happens, I'm billing you personally. Yeesh. Why, hello there! I'm Bill Starsap of Starsap Tours. Let me tell you, this place is for instance, did you know that New Homestead was one of the first colonies established outside of Earth? It's been populated in some capacity for over 200 years! Well, there's plenty more where that came from if you're interested in taking one of my famous tours. So what do you say? I've got an opening. I could take it. Excellent! You won't regret it! My tours are one of a kind! <laughs> now there's just the matter of price. The going rate for a genuine Star Sap tour. Great! Let's get this show! All right! So, this is New Homestead's main car. This underground area didn't exist when the original outpost, Titan Astro Base, was finished in 2130. Ooh, Follow me. I can't we'll come back here by here. the end of the tour and talk Those about the museum sure collection. But first, let's go see where people live. Now remember, these people aren't actors. They actually live here, so try to be respectful of that. While the original inhabitants of the Titan Astro Base lived in pods like you saw up above, they transitioned down here when this section of the base was finished in 2144. Space is extremely limited, so you'll notice some overflow here. But more residences also exist on lower levels, which are inaccessible to tours. I'll stop at each of our destinations if you want to look around, or if you have any questions for me. Have any questions so far? I'm not sure the exact count, but New Homestead is a fairly small colony. What you see is what you get for the most part, except for some other people who live in the private lower levels. Some, particularly security, and yours truly, even commute from other worlds. The 
original Titan Astro Base had more habitation pods on the surface connected to some of the old structures you may have seen in the back. As the colony grew, the base was expanded underground, and those hab units were recycled into materials used down here. Sadly, it's difficult to get additional construction done inside these underground caverns. So for now, additional populations are housed in these stacks of old shipping crates. As you might expect, this is where some of the less wealthy can afford to live. It's not glamorous, but they are functional and cozy. Oh sure, I'll be here waiting. <laughs> the locals love to talk with tourists, but they'll let you know if they're busy. So please respect them. Have any questions? So maybe a few. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I just wanted to say thanks for the. Di I had plans for Matsura, of course, but I. You know that Crimson Fleet pirate who held me captive for a bit a while ago. I just appreciated how you rescued me. That's all. I could, but it doesn't feel right. You're part of the family now. I would have given them an exhaustive series of lectures on a neutronic fusion until they were either delirious or they became my new students, obviously. Well, it left a lasting and so many things can go wrong out there. Working with people you could. That's why I've been in Constellation so long. It's good to have people who will help out with you. Uh, just wait till we get matching shirts and start having official cookie days. Sounds amazing, right? Reminds me of a time when I got stranded on a ship carrying tons of frozen foods when its engine and gravity system died in the middle of nowhere. The captain allowed everybody to eat only the cookies since the meats were so expensive. But with no gravity, the cookies baked into weird little spheres. So naturally, we floated around eating cookie gobs for days. I'd say we gained quite a lot of weight but as we were in space, uh, we factually did not. I'm guessing gourmet chunks days are out of the question. Don't worry, I'm just joking. Cause, speaking of which, I'm glad you joined Constellation. A long time. We should talk about it someday. I'd need to get some tea. Just figured I'd mention it, since we haven't had much time to chat before. You know, being a member of Constellation has given me a... It's hard to imagine. I would have never... And I never would... Irvin Madani was my husband. He was also a brilliant biologist who joined Constellation a couple of years before me. Yeah, he's gone now. <laughs> I... I remember his bright smiles when I returned from my trips. <laughs> wow. That's kind of you to ask. People used to say that we were polar opposites. He was quiet and he was just that way around everyone else. The war happened. He was caught in the crossfire between the UC and the Free Star Collective. It was right after he finished a job on Gagarin. Some terrible job, I don't remember. It's not you, Captain. It's just been on my mind. I can't say why. Urban's been gone. Well, I'm enjoying my time adventuring. We had so many adventures together, and then it... Maybe part of my mind is trying to remind...
Yeah, don't worry. Logically, I know I should be over it. I've ignored my feelings about... I'm just fortunate. I mean, where else? On that note... Have any questions so far? Alrighty! We'll be taking the residential elevator to the farm's area on the surface. Let's leave these good people alone for now and go check out the farms. Follow me up the elevator. <laughs> I can't wait to go away on my learning vacation when I grow up. New Homestead's farms are the beating heart of the colony. Without them, the original outpost would have shriveled and died. These pods are sealed and climate controlled, a perfect environment for growing the hydroponic vegetation needed for survival in the early days of the colony. Someone's got to talk to Joyce about these brownouts. Any questions about the farm? Good question. It's largely the same, because this was the colony that pioneered the techniques you see elsewhere. But you'll notice that the farms here are smaller and staffed by... Things here are a little more old-fashioned compared to some of the large factory farms you'll find elsewhere in the settled system. These days, it's a mix of what you find elsewhere in the galaxy, but in the olden days, it was all brought over from Earth. It was a lot of hearty root vegetables like potatoes, carrots, beets, and such, supplemented with corn, peas, green beans, soy, etc., which didn't always grow as well. Oh, they are indeed. Colonists still cultivate plant-based food for their own consumption here in New Homestead. It's less vital to their survival these days, as they also import supplemental food from other colonies, including meats, dairy, and synthetics, However, most citizens here take pride in a new homestead-grown, sustainable diet. By all means, go right ahead. Feel free to talk to the farmers, but I ask you respect their privacy and, and don't bother them too much. After all, they are on the job. Come back and let me know when you're ready. Some of us are quite happy with our lives here. We don't need tourists distracting us with their flights of fancy. We get a lot of tourists out this way, but most of them aren't so bold as to strike up conversations with us. What's your deal? Sorry, usually when the tourists say that, it means they want something. Free local produce, picture, or something else I don't intend to give. So what can I do for you? No worries. You up? You get used to the methane process and smell. My daddy says farming is really important, but I kind of want to do other things. Hello? I'm not really supposed to talk with tourists, but I kind of want to. You're not going to tell him, are you? Thank you! I promise it'll be fun! I like talking to tourists. I get to learn so much about everywhere else, and they get to learn- hmm. 
I think it's pretty fun. And I get to be around my... They say we all have to work a little. Because it takes all of us to make the community work. Just like on Earth, really... Someday, I think it'd be cool to see other places and do other things. My mama says it's because he thinks we'd up and leave if we found out about the rest of the worlds out there. But I keep telling him, I love it here, and I love him, and I would never leave him. He doesn't believe it. He says the kids almost always want to leave when they grow up. But not me. Nope. I just want to visit some... Not really. There's some, though. Most are around my... I don't... Mm, I don't know. I... We mostly learn about the history of the soul system and Earth and stuff like that. Until we get old enough to go, that's when we get to leave to go to school somewhere else for a few years. Or travel and visit other worlds, try out jobs and stuff. Oh, I can't wait. Thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Any questions about... Onward it is! <laughs> we'll be stopping by the Brown Horse Tavern later in the tour, which uses many of these locally sourced. But for now, it's just a short way to... So, the old bio labs are just on the other side of this building, believe it or not. Did you know we'll step on Earth through the hallway all sorts of cool animals? They're not in use anymore, Actually, lots but of the colony do. has faithfully but recreated this. them as a historical exhibit, true to the original purpose of the Titan Astro Base. Sadly, they're the undergoing some preserving light tradition. renovation. So Otherwise, there'd be interactive activities for kids to learn about how they used to search for microbial life here. Pardon the dust, but I can still answer some questions about the old Titan Astrobase file. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot to mention that. That's what this place was originally called. When NASA divested its interest in the Astrobase and turned it over to the people back in 2185, they renamed it New Homestead and established it as a historical site. Funny you should ask! <laughs> Sadly, none. See, NASA funded the Titan Astrobase project because conditions seemed ripe for primordial life to form in Titan's methane pools. They tested many different sites, performed deep core ice drilling and more, yet nothing turned up. Well, NASA defunded the Xenobiology program in 2132, but a scientist by the name of Catherine Neely proposed research into advanced colony building on inhospitable worlds. So, by 2135, work began on what would ultimately set us all up to create habitats anywhere humans dared to explore. These very labs housed the computer systems used in that research. That and general storage for the colony. Lots of storage. <laughs> sure thing. Keep in mind the Biolabs exhibit is closed for visitors, but feel free to look around, but don't touch. in the dust, but I can still... You got it! On to our next...
Next, we'll be heading outside, so make sure to check those seals on your suit because it's a bit chilly out there. <laughs> We're going out into the frozen wastes of Titan to see what powers this planet. Watch your step outside, by the way. The ice can be slippery if you're not careful. The goal is to keep people out of Dr. Lakota's infirmary. Welcome to New Homestead. Was lost in the memory for a moment there. Okay. Right. Anyway, where were we? Powering to Homestead. As you might imagine, generating energy was a real challenge back in the day because the technology was much more crude then. But crude or not, it was that technology that sustained the old Astro base. And it might surprise you to learn that the same technology is still working today. about this old colony is that it's mostly powered by clean, renewable energy. You'll see one of the methods used on the horizon up ahead. That's right, New Homestead's famous wind farms. This spot was chosen for the colony in part because of its constant winds. Turbines have been integral to the colony's function since its establishment as a cheap, mostly reliable source of electricity. Oh, pardon me. Good thinking. I've got plenty to do. Shall we? You're right. Most surface wind on Titan isn't too terribly strong, but here, the altitude and other conditions are perfect for sustained wind power. Like many worlds with atmosphere, the higher you go, the windier it gets.
You're looking at a piece of history! Sure, wind power is used throughout the galaxy, but these people were able to make do with it for hundreds of years! It's impressive that was all they had back then, and still make it work to this day! Mostly. <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed the occasional brownouts. I guess these old machines have a habit of freezing up, what with all the ice out here. There's some methane on reserve for critical life support systems, but everything else here is otherwise powered by the units you see here. Absolutely! Uh, careful!
questions? Fire away! <laughs> yeah, it's not as if they shut down for a month. It's not shut down at all, actually. See, this place is built with redundant systems, so they can shut it down piece by piece and suffer only a reduction in throughput. During that time, the UC gets more of its resources from other places, allowing New Homestead to maintain what it needs. Exports, mostly. Since this world is so methane-rich and has the infrastructure for it, a lot of the UC's methane comes from Titan. Of course, new homesteaders use it themselves for everything from generating heat to turning it into breathable oxygen by a modern science! Oh, uh... No one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> I, um... Uh, hmm. uh, something to do with methane-eating microbes, I believe? Okie dokie, artichokey! There will be time. So, this next stop is a bit of an interesting one. I only recently made it part of the tour. Fun fact, it's also the only natural landmark on the tour. What we're about to see is a glacial fire we affectionately call Emir's War.
Solus used to be named after a character in a popular fantasy novel, but it was changed a couple hundred years ago to avoid any potential litigation. Now, what's a colus, you might say? Colus derives from the Latin word for hill, and scientists only gave names to groups of hills on a planet's surface. So in reality, the term you hear more often is the plural, colise, with an E. You probably don't hear it very often where you're from, because it was usually a term reserved for unexplored planets, back when they didn't have the technology to describe what they were seeing firsthand. Because of that, the term is much more common in the Sol system, but you may still hear it occasionally in reference to uncharted worlds. This planet's full of them, though, and they like to preserve that history here. So here it is, Emir's Horn. You're free to take a closer look if you like. According to ancient Norse mythology, Emir was the first Jotun, a frost giant. In the legend, they were both male and female and gave birth to the progenitors of all giants from their armpits. Ymir even predated the Norse gods, who, as it turns out, killed Ymir to fashion the Earth and all of humanity from the corpse. It's a fascinating story, and the horn here is a fitting tribute to it. I've heard this particular formation was caused by an ancient volcano. Something about steam and wind, then worn down over time. <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure. Just be careful, it can get slippery out that way. <laughs> 